I very much enjoyed the Metro game, starting back when the first one was released on the Xbox 360. The concept was very interesting and I wanted to learn more about the world. The nook and cranny nature of the game very much reminded me what I liked about the first Bioshock. But as I continued with Metro, that comparison is really only for a surface level discussion, since Metro really is so unique. The movement was a bit slower, it felt a bit sluggish, while at the same time not feeling unresponsive. The shooting and mixture of stealth was enjoyable. I enjoyed the mix between fighting humans and monsters. The story was another area that was great. The world always seemed to be dripping with atmosphere, from all the areas you visited to the NPCs that you would see discussing their own lives. I loved the prior two games, and Metro Exodus takes this series from many of its underground levels to taking it now primarily taking place on the surface. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my review for Metro Exodus. I really enjoyed the gameplay here. The prior games focused on giving you these tight spaces where it effectively made you feel like you were living in a hole. You would hit points within the narrative that would allow you to have a level outside, but that didn't mean you were safe. Exodus takes the gameplay the series provided before while giving you bigger areas to explore. The beginning hours of the game start out similar to any of the prior Metro games. They are slow, but they are building to something. Once some of the consistent gameplay kicks in, you get some really enjoyable and familiar sections that feel like the prior Metro games, which is bookended by a very nice set piece. Hold on! Even on normal difficulty, Metro can be a bit tougher than you might expect. It isn't a run and gun type shooter, and this is seen throughout the whole game. If you get into a firefight, you'll want to use cover to avoid damage. There's a weight and almost sluggish feel to the movement and gameplay, and I think that helps the immersion rather than hurting it. The guns have the right effects and punches to them to really make firing them enjoyable. <laughs> You do get a nice variety within your arsenal as well. As you progress throughout the story, you'll find different and better parts to attach to your weapons. This is seen a lot within the open world sections. The previous two games were pretty linear in how they executed their stories, and while there are plenty of story-focused missions here, Exodus gives you the opportunity to just go about these open environments and see what you can find. The exploration here presents itself with a more player-initiated style, like Breath of the Wild, rather than a Ubisoft icon fest. And while I do enjoy Ubisoft open world games as they provide you with direction on where to go, there is something different and still satisfying about choosing a direction and seeing what you can find. It feels more like the player decided this all on their own, so the open area maps do not have icons for you to be able to go and see what's there. Instead, it's all on you. A lot of this consists of seeing what you might find. In some cases, you may not find anything but in many cases, you'll be rewarded for that exploration. You will find more attachments or new guns to use. The equipment can be very valuable as it can help to increase your ammo, health, or other effects. With the potential to find something new and earn rewards, it feels like wandering about these areas are highly encouraged. Throughout your travels, you'll find safe houses to rest at and enemy camps. The enemy camps are really enjoyable to do because they act as these mini action zones. I like how you can shoot everyone or use stealth weapons or other items to be able to help you out. 
Since the game puts a heavy emphasis on materials for crafting, the stealth route is highly encouraged because you can save your ammo for another fight. I did like the freedom in these situations, plus there was some great but sudden intensity with how you might run into these camps. The open world has a day and night cycle, so you might be wandering about at night and suddenly realize that you're within an enemy camp. A small but appreciated feature is how the last man of the outpost will surrender if you've taken out all his friends. I always chose to knock him out and steal his goods, but you could outright kill him if you want to and I think that affects your ending. Sometimes when you stumble across these camps, you'll find these people to save. You can choose to not save them, but if you do, you'll be rewarded. My first instance of this was when I saved someone and they gave me a key that I could use in a later story mission which gave me the night vision goggles a lot sooner. Another memorable encounter was how I found a hangar that potentially had some supplies but I was attacked by some monsters and then ambushed by some bandits who lived in the hangar. While these situations are scripted, I think they stand out more and feel more special in how they are executed. I chose to go about the open world. I chose to go into that hangar. The open world continually rewards the player for choosing to explore. And the open areas can be very dangerous, with monsters to fight, and even some that will pick you up and fly away with you. Metro does ask you to try and find as much crafting materials as you can. These are used to provide you with more useful items like health kits and ammo. Guns can also jam if they become dirty, so you're going to want to clean them. This may seem annoying, but I think this detail very much goes with the atmosphere in the game. You're in this bleak and destroyed world, and things are going to be dirty, and they're gonna break. One gun that I love to use was the crossbow. The silent kills were always satisfying, and I never got tired of it. There are some tougher foes that you will face off against, and one of the most memorable of these were the few instances where you had to go up against this battle bear. He would take so many bullets to put down, but it was a great fight. Plus these fights show off some of the really good destructible environments just within these scenarios. This series is one that really gets praised for its atmosphere and story, and once you start playing any of these games, you'll understand why. These places feel real particularly like how random people will be having conversations, and it'll give you some insight into how these characters spend their day, or it'll give you some insight into your crew, or you can even spend time with playing some music with them and getting to know them on a more intimate level. These quiet moments are important to have in a game like this. It keeps the dream of hope alive for these characters and continually reminds us of their humanity. The gameplay is solid and very much in line with the prior games, and the story is good as well. I did feel like the main narrative was more predictable than the past two. There were many instances where I felt like the game was obviously hinting at me what was going to happen next before the actual reveal. This did make some of the story moments predictable, but it didn't take any of the enjoyment out of experiencing them. What I do think helps to greatly ground the narrative is Anna, your main character's wife. Artyom only talks within loading screens, but not while he's in the actual game. I think the game effectively communicates his relationship with Anna without even having the characters really talking to each other. You find yourself really caring about her and buying into their relationship. She presents many sides to you and I really loved her character. Just A. She'd hug me and say, one day A, you and I are going to go to Vladivostok, the city I was born in, and from there to a village on the ocean shore. I was five back then and didn't really get much. But I could imagine that village and the ocean so vividly because I believed her. I really do not have many flaws with this game. Some may not like the slower movement and longer animations, but I feel like it fits within this world. The one flaw I did notice were the long load times on the PS4. The first open area has the worst of them with over a minute of loading. 
most of the linear sections are quicker and the later open world sections do take a lot faster to load than the first one. This was annoying, but overall I got over it and got sucked right back into the world because Metro is special and I really enjoyed it. I really do love this trilogy. With Metro Exodus delivering a fantastic conclusion, I feel like the story could end right here and I would be completely satisfied. Anna made the story emotional, and the gameplay encouraged exploration with intense firefights, sneaking missions, and encounters with monsters. If they choose to make another entry, I hope it flows well with the story they have here. I don't want them to make another entry for the sake of just having another one. What I would love for them to do is find a way to combine all three of these games into one long experience. I find each of these games to be a great continuation of the last one, and I would love to be able to play them all just in one sequence. Metro Exodus is a great ending to a fantastic trilogy.